True crime dropouts may contain some graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hey guys, you're listening to True Crime Dropouts. I'm Mary. And I'm Vanessa. And today we are going to be talking about Gregory Green. Ooh, I don't think I recognize this name. Okay, okay. I didn't either. I didn't know about him until I saw like a Facebook post and I was like, hmm, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that case. Okay. Sounds good. So genuine reactions from Vanessa. Yes, as long <laughs> as we don't lose any of our audio. I sort of fucking gone. <laughs> and again, if you hear my puppy in the background struggling, we are crate training. <laughs> so letting y'all know. No one's hurting her. <laughs> Little JJ. I know, God. Somebody please help me. <laughs> okay, so Mr. We're gonna start off. We're gonna start off strong. So, in 1991, Gregory fatally stabbed his then-wife, Tanya Green. We're just going to start off the bat like this? Yes, yes. He stabbed her several times in the face and chest. The The real ringer, the real doozy of this one was Tanya was six months pregnant. No. With his baby. Oh, what a, mm, what a bastard. Yep. Oh, my God. Which also indicates he also killed their unborn child. So after killing Tanya, Gregory called the police, called 911 on himself, and uh, the correction spokesman, Chris Gotts, said... When the police arrived, he let them in and told them what he had done. So he was just straight up like this. He was just like, hi, 911. I killed my wife. Mm -hmm. I will be sitting on the couch with my cup of coffee Mm -hmm. as you walk in through the door. Mm -hmm. Damn. It is also known that Tanya Green had two other children, five and eight years old, from a previous relation. However, Mm -hmm. it is not clear if they were home at the time of the killings or if they were harmed. There was no charges filed related to them, though. So I don't think they were harmed or anything. (sighs) So Gregory pleaded no contest to second-degree murder charges and was sent to prison in 1992 with a 15 to 25-year sentence. I like this 15 to 25 years not like my previous fucking case. <laughs> Not the Cherry Mahan one, but the other one where they gave the little assholes <laughs> 2 to 20. Yep. So, he was paroled in 2008 after spending a total of 16 years in prison for the murders of Tanya and their unborn child. While in prison, Gregory completed a cognitive program They denied Gregory's previous four requests for parole because he demonstrated little emotion or remorse and a lack of empathy. After, oh, hold on. Okay, so he was released on parole with the support of his family and friends, just, you know, raving about him, including a pastor who lobbied on his behalf whose daughter Gregory Gregory would later marry. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I am speaking to my entire family when I say this, husband included. You fucking murder anybody in my family or myself? Mm -hmm. I am not, and I am going to say this again, N-O-T, not gonna be supportive of you no at all no no the fuck i look like two if if my son or daughter was like mom i met a guy because i'm crazy so i'm gonna go ahead and google this guy 
And he comes up that he murdered his six month pregnant wife, right? I would be like, you crazy? <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, sir. Forbidden mm-hmm. restraining order. <laughs> Okay, so one of the letters, he wrote um, multiple letters, this pastor. I don't know his first name. He, they, they just call him Pastor Harris. So he wrote multiple letters on Gregory's behalf, and this is a quote from one. Gregory and I were friends before his mishap, and he, and he was incarcerated. On, he, he wrote this on August 17th, 2005, so he got released in 2008, but this was prior. I feel like he has paid for his mis- his unfortunate lack of self-control and the damage he has caused as much as possible and is sorry. This will not restore the lives that were taken. He will carry that with him for the rest of his life. The following year, Pastor Harris wrote again in support of Gregory's release. I've noticed a great deal of growth and his understanding has matured quite a bit as well as his processing skills if he was to be released he would be welcome as a part of our church community and whatever we could do to help him adjust we would so prison officials also reported that Gregory follows the rules he followed the rules and kept his area clean he interacted well with other inmates receiving just one write up over a fist fight with another man over the use of the television. <laughs> later, oh, later, sorry, letters to the parole board also showed support from, for, for, for Gregory. So even the parole board was supported this guy's release. There was no letters from 2004 to 2008 against the release of Gregory. We believe Gregory is is very sorry for what he did and has gained insight to his behaviors. Gregory's parents, Woodrow and Tommy Lee Green, wrote in a letter on November 22, 2006. He has worked hard in prison and he continues to to make a positive adjustment. His parents also mentioned in the letters that Gregory would be welcome into their home upon his release. Gregory's sister also told the parole board about Gregory's apparent turn towards faith. You know, he found God. Over the years, Greg has become closer to the Lord and reads his word daily. Dedra Borders wrote, I don't know if it's supposed to be Deborah or Dedra. It's, it's spelled Dedra, but I, I don't know if that's a typo. Because I, hmm. I, like, looked, but they don't have much on the sister, so... On November 22nd, 2006, I believe this is what helped Greg through this difficult and trying time. So, everybody was hyping Greg up. I just, okay, I totally understand that there are people out there that come out of prison, like, and then totally flip their lives around. Yeah. Right? Changed. Like I, changed yeah, totally people. changed. I completely 1000% know that that can and is possible, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, I just don't understand how they think someone who just, like, murdered his fucking pregnant wife, right, called the cops on himself and then had, like, no remorse as to what happened thinks is, like... He's just able to rehabilitate. Yeah, like because I feel like if at that at the point of like killing someone, if you just have like no remorse, you're it, to me you're like instantly a psychopath. Yeah, and like there's, I don't believe there's a way to rehabilitate someone that has no empathy for what they did. You know, and then let alone for like his little pastor friend to be like, we've been friends long before this. I'm sorry, but like. I'm not friends with Darwin, mm-hmm. but I am acquainted with Darwin, mm-hmm. and I've known Darwin for years now. But, like, if he killed you whilst pregnant, Mm-mm. I would be like, let the bastard burn in hell. No, ma'am. <laughs> like, Same. I'm not going to be like, he 
was my best friend's husband, and he is a great man. I'm like, no, he was Burn he was, man. He was awesome leading up to this. <laughs> yeah, like he was great up until the point where he killed my best friend. At that point, once you do that, t- just throw him in the hole. Mm. Ridiculous. So, about two years after Gregory was released from prison, he married Faith Faith Harris. I guess her last name was Harris. But now Faith Green on December 18th, 2010. This was the pastor's daughter. Faith had two children from a previous relationship, Kara Allen and Chadney Allen. They were um, around the time of the incident. They were 17 and 19. I don't know how old they were. I guess we can do the math, but... They were, yeah, you know, like ten and uh, ten and twelve around the time that he met them, and they had two daughters together, Coy and Kaylee, and they were five and four at the time of the incident. According to public record, Faith filed for divorce on October eleventh, two thousand thirteen, and again on August eleventh, two thousand sixteen. Records show that Gregory rejected a personal protection order filed by Faith in February of 2013 before filing for divorce. Faith Faith applied on February 22nd, 2013, a personal protection against her husband. According to court records, the request in the request, Green wrote that her husband had threatened Oh, okay. So, Faith wrote that her her husband threatened that things were going to get real ugly if she didn't leave the home. He, He also, and I quote, he jumped me like he was going to attack. He, she wrote, then, and this went on for hours. So he was just like trying to like jump at her to like, to scare her, like just to torture her pretty much. The complaint, also, uh, the complaint also claimed that Gregory was bel- belligerent and kicking things the day before the filing. He kicked the couch where the baby was sleeping, she wrote. In the protection request, Faith indicated that she did not contact the police but had intended to go to the station to file a formal report that day after work. I didn't want to leave the house and not be able to get back in, she explained. I guess the kids were probably home with him, so. Yeah. The court denied the request without a hearing based on insufficient allegations for a PPO at this time. So they denied it. So a month later, on the early morning of September 21st, 2016, Faith Green found herself bound with duct tape and zip ties in the basement of their home in Dearborn Heights, Michigan. My God. This is just outside of Detroit. Her foot had been shot and her face had been slashed with a box cutter. Her two teenage children, Kara and Chadney, were with her, dead of gunshot wounds. Oh my God. And she had watched them die. Her two younger children were dead upstairs, poisoned with carbon monoxide. The car had been filled with carbon monoxide while the two children were inside. Investigators found duct tape on the muffler of the car and a plastic tube was attached to it, according to the prosecution's office. The bodies were later moved inside the house prior to, you know, the police getting there. Gregory, her husband was the killer of course <laughs> of, of, of fucking course you really thought a man who killed his previous wife who was pregnant was completely rehabilitated tell me again how 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 After pastor only- harris i'm speaking to you directly Are, do, do you still think he's a good man oh, god the same man who has freedom faith faith's father advocated for just just a decade ago. Yeah, killed his dog. <laughs> As Gregory did with his first wife, 
He called 911 and waited for the police to come around 1.15 a.m. He waited in the driveway of his home at the 4400 block of Hip in Dearborn Heights, authorities say. He had shot his family, and they were inside the house, he told the officers. Gregory was charged with killing with the killings of the two young children and the two older stepchildren and pleaded guilty of the force of, to the forced slings. So he uh, Gregory was also charged with the attack of faith and he pleaded guilty to the attack. Gregory will spend 45 to 100 years behind bars as a part of his guilty plea to the charges against him, which included weapons charges. He faces sentences in the Wayne, he faced sentencing, sentencing in the Wayne County Circuit Court. Green pleaded guilty, like I said, to the second degree murder of Kaylee, Coy, and Kara, and Chadney. On September 21st. And he, this is a quote from Gregory. Unfortunately, I took the lives of Kaylee, Coy, and Chadney and Kara, said Gregory. I shot my ex-wife and left my two girls in the car, which was filled with carbon monoxide. Mm-hmm. And Kara and Chadney, I shot them. He, uh, he pled guilty to the torture and the assault with intent to do great bodily harm in the attack of faith. And he pled guilty the fel- to the felony firearm charges. And luckily, faith was granted, finally granted the divorce from Gregory on December, six, uh, December 2016, according to I the Wayne County like, records. I just feel like... If this guy obviously had, like, a record, mm-hmm. right, why the fuck would you not grant the divorce the like, first time? Immediately. 2013, it shouldn't have been an issue. Exactly. Like, this is, this is fucking why. He had a felony. <laughs> yeah. For killing his ex-wife. Like, and then people wonder why the fuck women are afraid to leave their abusers. Mm-hmm. Like, why did you just leave? Why'd you, why'd you stay in that situation? Because, like, A, you know, you're fucking afraid for your life. And B... You probably don't have nowhere else to go. Yeah, look at this fucking woman. I don't, we don't know if she was abused or not. I don't know if you could find that. But, like... The fact that he had a felony for murdering his ex-wife and they didn't grant the divorce the first fucking time, Mm -hmm. she almost fucking died. And her children, all of her children died. Are dead, yes. And like, uh, now you want to grant a divorce? I would be suing. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous fucking suing mm-hmm. who do you sue in this situation the county the state i don't know the Probably. country <laughs> america <laughs> america because i'd be like i want 25 million dollars mm-hmm. per fucking child mm-hmm. oh fucking fucking people. oh my god mm-hmm. i hate so everything the plea was given with the express approval of faith the mother of it, obviously, the children, and the father of the two other children, the of the Allen children. So he had a say too. I don't know his first name. I couldn't find that. So, also during the sentencing hearing, Faith wore a white turtleneck and spoke to her children's killer, perhaps for the last time. You are a con artist. You are a monster. You are a devil in disguise. You are now forever exposed, she said as she stood behind the podium in the Wayne County courtroom. Gregory in a dark green jail uniform sat just a few feet away, his back towards her. Like, you can't even face her. What a fucking coward. Yeah. His back was towards her? Yeah. No punishment will be enough for her, uh, for, for her children's death, fate said. Not even torture and the death 
and death would be justice. Your justice will come when you burn in hell for all of eternity for murdering four innocent children, all because you're insecure. What a fucking piece of shit, bro. Yeah, and then, so we also find out that they try to question, like, they, they, reporters try to question the pastor, and the pastor was like, no comment. Uh, no, uh, no what happened, comment? Grandpa? Grandpa? No, no comment, Pastor Harris. I thought you said he found Jesus. He was a rehabilitated man. I, right? I thought you believed in him. Mm. Ooh, don't it come and bite you in the ass. It shouldn't have been this bad, but... I mean, yeah, it shouldn't have been this bad, but that's what you get for a... Uh, Advocating know. for a freaking murderer. Mm-hmm. And then letting your daughter marry him. I um, bet, you know what? He probably officiated the met- the wedding. I, if I were Pastor Harris, I would be just forever a hermit in my own basement, mm-hmm. never leaving my home because I done fucked up. Mm-hmm. <sighs> The shame of it all. So, apparently, they found him mentally competent. Obviously, he was able to tell on himself and immediately confess. Yeah, yeah. And he, like I said, he pled guilty to all of the charges. And he apparently cried as he described what he had done. And he put, and, and I quote, unfortunately, oh, I said this, yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Cry me a fucking river. Yeah. No. No. So he didn't speak anything else during his sentencing besides his, like, unfortunately, I took the lives. Yeah, um, yeah. His brief statement was apologetic, but he gave no explanation of the motives behind the deaths. Um, he says, oh, and another quote, I feel bad for how this had, has deeply impacted everyone and may God help them help me. No, look, I know Jesus is supposed to be a man of forgiveness, Mm -hmm. but I would not. (laughs) Yeah. Dude. uh, And then I don't have much on... Faith or the little kids, Koi and what's what's the she has a weird name. Kira? No. Kaylee. Kaylee. Um Kara and Chadney were the older ones. Oh, okay. So I do have a little bit on them. Kara was a High school student. She was a member of the student newspaper and varsity football cheerleading team, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. The newspaper, the newspaper reported when, when, oh, wait, no, sorry. She was a member of the National Honor Society. She dreamed of becoming a medical doctor and Chadney, they don't have much on him, but he had just graduated from high school. Wow. These kids had the a year. whole life. Yeah, the home. year before the incident. So Gregory is in prison. Rotting in hell. Yes. He will be 97 by the time he is eligible for parole. And at that point, I can guarantee you, he's not going to make it to 97. I don't think so. I hope not. I really hope not. But even then... If he ever does get released, I hope he's so frail that he can't even wipe his own ass. Yeah. Maybe he's, like, in diapers. Mm -hmm. And then some, they can send him to, like, a nursing home, and they can just abuse him for the rest of his life. Which is the scariest part of it all. (laughs) You know, you hope that, like, your your parents don't get abused in nursing homes, but but that is a sad fucking reality. Yes, nursing homes are a death sentence. I, 
remember I used to be in choir in high school. Yes, I'm lame as hell. <laughs> but like we would go for like the holidays and go sing for these old people in nursing homes and you can just see it in their little eyes. Like, please, for the love of God, Help me. get me out of here. Help. <sighs> yeah. They do not be taking care of the old people. That's why my mom said, as long as you guys don't kick me out, I'm just going to be here for the rest of my life. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, mom, that's fine. As long as you make paper poses. Yep. Which she still hasn't made for me. But I don't know. We're just going to let that slide. Woman. Mm, my damn mother. <laughs> <laughs> but that is my case. I just like how, like, you just came in and it was Boom, we're getting straight to it. Well, and then Fuck I did this have guy's backstory <laughs> on this dude. And I figured there was not much media coverage. Like, just looking. Like, he doesn't even have a wiki page. Yeah, that's like, it's like really local. Yeah. I had to use pretty much. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, I closed my tab. But the only thing that they had was the. the the little, it's like wiki, but it's not wiki. Kind of like that Murderpedia situation. Murderpedia. I had to use Murderpedia. Oh, okay. Because they did not have anything. They had like a few like news articles that I was able to read, but it was nothing that the Mur- Murderpedia didn't already mention. Like say, yeah. So. But, you know, I would like for a lot of our listeners to send us more of that stuff. I feel like local crimes are just so wild. Mm-hmm. And then because you don't hear about them, no one ever knows about it. So if you guys have a local crime... And unfortunately, these were African-American people, so, you know, so they they wouldn't be heavily... Yeah, you're not going to get that heavy, heavy coverage. Like Chris Watts they, did. Yeah. Because it's about yeah. the same. It's, yeah, it's like Family Annihilator. Yeah. And I think that also kind of goes to unfortunately show the kind of the way the judicial system kind of handles cases involving people of color Mm -hmm. because the fact that this man with a felony was able to just stay in this house after a protection uh, like a file for protection was filed against him and they just were like oh nope not enough evidence. Oh, the felony of killing his ex-wife and his unborn child wasn't a good enough amount of evidence? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I, it, like, really upsets me whenever you do hear people say, well, I mean, the judicial system, you know, they treat everyone the same. Well, no, it's not true. Because I can guarantee you if, like, Chris Watts had a felony for murdering his wife, I'm pretty positive they would have allowed the other woman to like to divorce him if that were the case Mm -hmm. right but like unfortunately when it comes to people of color especially african-american and hispanic people like you see the pretty much the most negligence when it comes to that you always see the most negligence definitely yeah they like refuse to give you like you know, protection orders or divorces or this and that because, like, they feel like, oh, well, I mean, what did you expect? Mm. You know? Because I feel like that's how kind of, like, they they make it out to be. Like, well, what do you expect marrying someone mm-hmm. of so-and-so race? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? There's just that, like, discrimination against it. And I feel like that, like, really needs to fucking change because if, if they would have really treated that's everyone's why case the same... That's why racism is so prominent still, like... There's, yes. there's no, no one is, is showing any different from our judicial system to our political parties to all of it. It's mm-hmm. blatant to see the racism is still there. Yeah. And I like, I totally did not mean to make this like super political or controversial, but fuck it. This is our (laughs) podcast and we can say whatever the hell Mm -hmm. we want on here. Mm -hmm. But like, it is so goddamn important. Any one of our fucking listeners that are in the United States, you better take your fucking ass to the polls in November and fucking vote. Mm -hmm. Because especially like for us two we are women of color and we are women and Mm. 
We either come to... from immigrant family. We do. We both come from immigrant families. Yeah. Both of us come from immigrant families. And, like, the fact that we... It is 20 fucking 20. And the fact that I still get looked at like a piece of trash for talking to my mother in her native language is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. The fact that people get looked at for being in interracial relationships is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody, I swear to God, everybody needs to fucking get their asses out and vote. Mm -hmm. Go to your fucking, if you want to early vote, go for it. Mm -hmm. If you can mail in your ballot, go for it. If you can tough it out and put your fucking mask on and go and vote at whatever voting polling place you have near you go for it i'm not trying to be a fucking handmaid Mm -hmm. in this lifetime no (laughs) ma'am no (sighs) ma'am it's so sad it's depressing seriously it is so depressing and it is fucking Columbus Day. Fuck <laughs> Columbus. <laughs> Fuck that shit. At the time of fucking recording, it is Columbus Day. It's and a you Monday. know what? Do you know what Christopher Columbus did? He didn't fucking do shit for mm. America except for rape and murder an entire population of indigenous people. Mm-hmm. Fuck this. And he gets a whole damn holiday. And he gets a whole damn holiday? No. No, no. No. Get your ass out and vote. I am not trying to be a handmaid. (laughs) Stop the goddamn racism and black lives fucking matter. Bye, guys. Bye. I'm Arielle. And I'm Amanda. And we're the hosts of Homicide Homegirls, a true crime podcast where two best friends discuss true crime cases that they can't stop obsessing over. If you're like us and your guilty pleasure is serial killer documentaries, whodunit mysteries, missing persons cases, and procedural police shows, then do we have a treat for you. Check out the Homicide Homegirls podcast today on Facebook and Instagram, then subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, or wherever you get your podcasts. Then get ready, because on Wednesdays, we talk murder. Thanks for listening. If you'd like more content like you just heard, add us on patreon.com forward slash true crime dropouts. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at true crime dropouts. And don't forget, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and more. If we aren't on your favorite streaming service, let us know and we will see what we can do. Stay in school.